just a quick note before the video starts we've had a bunch of stuff that's been cancelled for obvious reasons and it's been pushed back to january february that's why uploads on the channel have been a little sparse lately however in the meantime kim has been toiling away at this video and it's a bit of a banger so enjoy i'll be back to business in a week or two thanks for bearing with me enjoy Four years ago now, I learned this skill, how to spin a basketball on your fingertips. It took me four hours and 39 minutes to figure out how to do it for 30 seconds continuously. But today, we're gonna to do an experiment. We're gonna find out how long it takes someone else to learn this skill. And that person is none other than the often imitated, but never duplicated, Kim Boyd, my wife. All right, here's the script. The goal is 30 continuous unbroken seconds spinning the basketball on your fingertips. Kim is going to learn in exactly the same way as I did, which is no coaching, anything like that. You're on your own. <laughs> so this is Kim's day one, hour zero. I wish you the best of luck. All right, Kim, let's see what you got. Turns out Kim had nothing. So it's good to see that you don't have any <laughs> hidden skill that I was unaware of, and we truly are starting from scratch. I think you're gonna struggle with this one. Why? Because this one's tricky. Uh, it doesn't look as hard as juggling. It's way harder than juggling. I actually don't know if you're gonna be able to do it. <laughs> So in case you missed it, Kim did a video where she learned to juggle in the exact same way as I did. Uh, you can go check that out. She was slightly slower than me, but pretty much the same type. Spinning a basketball is considerably more difficult. This is day two. What's the thinking behind this? Well, I know Because that... I did it, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the difference in our hand sizes is, is quite considerable. And this requires a lot of finger strength. I would say that sticking your fingers together is cheating, but I did it, so you're lucky. <laughs> That's it. You're getting a couple of spins there. Kim seemed delighted with even the slightest amount of progress. On day three, Kim discovered that by spinning the ball the other way, things were much better. I remember discovering this when I was learning this as well. I'm not sure what it is, but the ball prefers to spin one way or the other. I don't know why. Oh, it's so much easier. The next thing to learn is how to hit the ball to keep it spinning. This is the hard bit. <laughs> After just seven days of practice, Kim had gotten remarkably good at this. However, the goal was 30 seconds, and that was still a long way off. Oh my god! This might be it! Oh my god! Keep going, keep going! Ah! <laughs> 
Look at the look at the blood circulation. <laughs> so that time was 25 seconds. That's really good. I'm really happy with that. It, well, it was, it was like 23, something like that. But oh. yeah. Unfortunately, Kim had plateaued at around 25 seconds. Being so close to the finish line without actually crossing it, Kim began to feel oh, frustrated. <laughs> Okay, Kim, this is day... 13. This is it. Oh, my God! I'm doing it! I'm doing it! I'm doing it! Just, could you just stop talking? What was that? 20 seconds. Ah! Ah! That was very close. Damn it! <laughs> How long was that? It was 26 seconds. Come here. You're so sweaty. Oh no! Just shush, okay? <laughs> Stop laughing. I'm so angry that you didn't catch it. I might as well stop. Are you trying to annoy me? What happens? Like, why does it fall? Like, what happens? You always roll. You always film, yeah? 10 more seconds to go. After countless attempts at almost 30 seconds, Kim did what we should always do when we feel too frustrated and took a few days off. This allowed some of her irritation directed at me to die down, somewhat. That's gotta be it. Yeah. That's gotta be it. You think so? Please. That's gotta be it. That was 36. <laughs> 36 seconds. Oh my god! <laughs> you were you were well clear. Oh my god! You actually cried. She's legit crying. Check this out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you totally have this down now. Kim did an excellent job of learning that skill. However, with a time of five hours and 27 minutes, she was still 38 minutes slower than I was. This episode is sponsored by Skillshare. We are approaching the end of the year. It might already be 2021 by the time you're watching this. And I bet many of you have the New Year's resolution of learning a new skill. If that is the case, Skillshare is a good place to start. If you don't have anything in mind that you'd like to learn, I suggest maybe trying to learn to solve the Rubik's Cube. I actually teach this class on Skillshare. I've done it in a way that teaches you how to solve this the most intuitive way. That is by learning the least number of algorithms that you have to memorize. That way you just use your intuition and you can do it mostly by just looking at the cube. There's only a couple of algorithms you need to learn. If you'd like to learn something a bit more useful, there are many, many coding or video editing, photography, 
business classes on Skillshare. One that I would highly recommend is one taught by Thomas Frank. It's all about productivity, so you can get your act together in 2021. Skillshare is usually less than 10 bucks a month if you go for the annual plan. However, since they are supporting the show, the first 1,000 viewers to use the link down below will get a free trial. That gives you access to all of the classes on Skillshare. And as I said, there are tens of thousands of them. So there's definitely something that covers your needs. Thank you to Skillshare for supporting the show and thanks to you for watching. Check that link for your free trial. I'll see you next time. Peace.